So now we're in the third week of Advent, and uh, tonight we're going to make a uh, shepherd's pie. And I kind of like this recipe because it's winter and it's comfort food, it's, it's warm, and, and, uh, and also it's a way to involve a number of family members in, in a recipe that's fairly complicated, but with a team of people, uh, you can make it happen. Shepherd's pie uh, is an Irish dish and uh, it's covered with uh, mashed potatoes. So I've got the potatoes cooked and we're just going to mash them and set them aside so that we have that ready to top out the recipe later. So I've got a couple tablespoons of butter and I'm going to melt that in the microwave. Should just take about 15 seconds for this. And I have the potatoes ready. And we're just going to dump those into the mixer and add our other ingredients. We're going to use a paddle attachment, but you can use a hand mixer for this too, it works fine. And we'll just dump our butter in there. And we have a little milk as well. At the end of, the, of this uh, episode, you'll see the recipe. And I'm having it because I live alone and I can't eat that much. So it's going to be about a quarter cup of milk. We can always add more if that doesn't seem to take care of it. And we want to add some salt and pepper. About a quarter teaspoon of salt. Needs a little more milk. Uh, you want this a little bit soupy. so that it'll spread over the top of the pie. And just for some binding, we're gonna put a, an egg in there as well. That looks perfect. We'll just leave that aside and then we'll start working on the rest of the pie. We have some ground beef here and traditionally shepherd's pie is made with lamb, ground lamb, but uh, that's not very available in Kansas and this is just as good. Put a little butter in the skillet making this in a cast iron skillet, but uh, whatever your preference is, is fine. Once that begins to melt, we'll start adding our ingredients. So we're going to start with about a half an onion. And I put one carrot in here. I think the recipe calls for two. If you're making this for a family, you're gonna want the full recipe. I love it. 
We're gonna add a little salt and pepper to that. Salt pulls the moisture out of vegetables and so that's gonna kinda quicken the process of softening them. Now we're going to add our ground beef and with the full recipe you'd want this whole pound of beef but I'm just going to use half of it. And just use your wooden spoon to break it up. It'll break up easily as it browns as well. You don't really want big chunks of meat. You want it broken up pretty evenly. You can see that meat turning colors, so we're getting pretty close here. Now we're going to add several things. We're going to add some garlic. I think the recipe calls for two cloves and half a teaspoon of thyme, uh, dried thyme, and a teaspoon of Worcestershire sauce. So we're just going to stir that in and let that bloom for about a minute and this is starting to smell wonderful now we're going to add a couple tablespoons of flour stir that around. That's going to be a thickening agent. And of course flour has a kind of a raw taste so you want to get that cooked so that it takes away that flavor. And then it gets incorporated there. Let that flour get good and heated. Now we're going to add, I'm putting a half a cup, the whole recipe is a full cup, or I think it's a cup and a half. I'm putting in three fourths of chicken broth. You can use beef broth if you choose. And as that cooks, the flour is going to kind of thicken it. I'm just going to let that thicken up a bit. You see that boiling away there, that's reducing that chicken broth, which is intensifying the flavor. Now, again, there's a quite a bit of prep to this. There's the dicing the onion and dicing the carrots, mincing the garlic, so, you know, uh, various family members can be involved in all that preparation work. I've done that ahead and I've just dumped it in, but you know, that that's all kind of labor intensive, but with a team of a family, it actually can be kind of fun to put this together. And you want to let that boil for three to five minutes, depending on how long it takes, but you obviously you don't want, this is not soup, you want that to be kind of thickened when we pour that into our dish. now. One of the ways you can do this is you can use it in a conventional oven and just stick this whole skillet 
into the oven and 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 you're then you're gonna put the broiler on and uh, uh, kind of uh, get a nice crust on that on those potatoes but I have a gas oven and it the broiler doesn't function very well so I'm going to put this into a a baking dish and then I'm going to put it in a toaster oven and broil it that way. Okay, you see the, how that's coming together and it's about right as it is. I'm turning off the heat. That's about the consistency you want. And one thing you might do is to just cover that without heat and let that steep for five minutes and that'll soften those carrots all the more. You know, carrots are kind of tough and, and, and you, want, you don't want them too crunchy for this recipe, you want them softened. And then after we have turned off the heat, we're gonna add a cup of frozen peas. And that just adds a nice color and consistency to the whole thing. So now we're gonna pour that into our, oh, I forgot. It also gets about a tablespoon of tomato paste. And that adds a richness to it as well. So I'll just stir that in. Normally you would want to put that in earlier, but it's, it's fine. Tomato paste, along with other things like Worcestershire sauce and soy sauce, um, they really add a depth of flavor to dishes like this. So you see the wonderful colors that are there. And this is just a w great consistency. Now we're going to dump that into our casserole dish. So there's the pie and then we're gonna to top it with our mashed potatoes. We'll just smooth that out so you get that from edge to edge of the pan. And then some recipes suggest that you take a fork and just so that when you're broiling it, it kind of turns some wonderful color. So we're gonna take this over to our toaster oven. Put it on the lowest shelf and we'll set it at broil. And we're gonna do that for six minutes and see how that works. I can see some color here. And there it is. So you can see the layers there.
Mm. It's so warm and comforting. I love it. <laughs>